In this Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can key out green screen footage quickly and easily with the ultra key effect. The first thing we need to do is get some green screen footage. I'm going to drag it from my project window to the timeline. Here we have green screen footage that we want to Here we have green screen footage that we want to key out. To get to the ultra key effect, click these two arrows down in your project panel, then select effects in the search bar type ultra. You'll see ultra key. Just drag it onto the clip in your timeline. Now we'll have some options. Here under ultra key, we have key color. If you click this eyedropper, then you can select a color. It's important that when you're selecting a color, you hold control or command, and then your eyedropper will become bigger and sample a five by five selection of pixels. Select somewhere in a mid value close to your subject. This will do a pretty good job keying out most of the things. Then we have a couple of default settings that you can try to see how they work. As you can see, we still have some of the green screen to key out in the background. If you change this to aggressive, aggressive expands the pixel color range for added transparency. You could change this to relaxed, and as you can see, a lot more green comes through. Relaxed contracts the pixel color range for reduced transparency. And then, of course, you can do custom adjustments. Generally, a good place to start is aggressive and see how that looks. Make sure that it's not going through your subject. One thing you want to check is right now the output is set to composite. If you change this to alpha channel, you can better see what is being keyed out. The goal is to have the background solid black or transparent and the subject be solid white. So we want to get rid of these areas and then these gray areas on the subject. One thing we can do for these areas where the subject doesn't go is we can put a garbage mat around. We can do that right in Premiere under the opacity effect. This is a default effect applied to every clip. There is a pen tool on the opacity effect. Make sure you click the pen tool on opacity, not the pen tool on ultra key, because the pen tool on ultra key will only affect ultra key. So click this. And then generally you want to zoom out a bit. And then I'll click right here and then here, and then I'll come up and I'll go through this and I'll make sure I select out the areas where my subject isn't. And then that automatically takes away those areas. Then it's a good idea to scrub through your timeline to see if your subject gets anywhere near the mat. And since my subject stays in the middle, I can even bring these points much farther in. So I don't even have to worry about those parts of the keying. So I can bring this in as well. And as close as you can get this mat to your subject without cutting anything off, will just make the keying process a lot better. So right here, my subject gets a little close, so I'm gonna raise this up. And so right there, I have a pretty good key, but you can see that there's some spots where there's gray on the subject. So I'll go ahead and fit that back in. So now what we need to do is make some adjustments. So we have a couple of choices. First step, we go to mat generation. The transparency control adjusts the transparency of the source image when keyed over a background. For example, 100 is fully transparent and zero is fully opaque. So if I bring this down to zero, you can see that it's fully opaque. And then here it's trying to make the mask as transparent as possible. So I'll reset that. But this can be good because sometimes you can just lower the transparency a little bit until you don't have any gray inside your image and then you don't have any gray in the background. This can be a great effect to use. Then the highlight adjustment adjusts the opacity of the light areas of the source images. So anything that is bright, this is what is adjusted. So if I raise this, so if I raise this up and down, it'll adjust the highlights. And then shadow adjusts the transparency of the shadows. So if I raise this down to zero, now the shadows are fully transparent. And if I raise it up, then the shadows are starting to come through and be more opaque. Tolerance is the range of the green color. So if I lower this down, then it's less green color that is being selected. The aggressive setting puts this at 90. Pedestal cleans up the noise in the background. So the aggressive setting raises the pedestal up and what this does is remove noise in the green in the background. So this starts at 10 and you can see how it has all this noise in the background. And then you can raise the pedestal up until that noise goes away. 
So now we can do some more matte cleanup. I would lower the transparency a little bit on this clip just to get rid of some of those areas inside. Then under matte cleanup, we can continue to refine our matte. Choke shrinks the matte from the outside edges. So if I choke this, you can see how everything becomes very thin. You want to use this very sparingly because it can really destroy your image. Soften softens the edges of the matte. So if again, if I crank that up, you can see how soft and fuzzy the matte is. Then contrast makes the matte much more contrasty. So this is really good. If I lower the contrast, you can see these gray areas come back. But then if I have high contrast, all those gray areas inside the figure go away. And then midpoint changes the midpoint of the gray that is transparent. I'm gonna raise the contrast just a little bit. And then let's go ahead and look at the composite image. So here we have an OK key. A nice way to see how your key is doing is to put a color mat behind it. So for example, if we go to File, New, Color Mat, click OK, and then we can choose a red color mat. And then in our project window, you'll see the color mat. And then we can just drag this under our video. And so that way you can see if anything is transparent in your image and you can also see the spill that's happening. On this image, I'm just going to lower it down just a little bit. And then now we have to fix spill suppression. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And the spill suppression is on the edges of the image and we can turn off our color mat so we're not seeing it right now. In the ultra key, after you've done your mat generation and mat cleanup, then you go to spill suppression. First, you can check desaturate. If I turn this up to 100, it's going to desaturate the image completely. So we don't want that. What it's doing is trying to desaturate the edge pixels. Range is the range of pixels it tries to do. So if I crank this up to 100, it's trying to turn all the green pixels the opposite of what we selected as our key color. So now everything is magenta. And if I bring it all the way to zero, it's not changing any of these green pixels. You see how all this green light is spilling on the subject? So the default is 50, and it does a pretty good job of spill suppression. And then you can decide how much spill. So if I crank this up to 100, notice it changed all of those greens to the opposite side of the color wheel. And if I put this down to zero, it doesn't change any of the green. And then Luma changes the luminance of those outsides. So if I put it down to zero, it's right there, and then if I put it all the way up, it changes the luminance to the opposite of what those pixels are. The default values usually work pretty well, but what you can do is change how much you want because this particular clip has a lot of motion blur in the fingers and things like that. So I can just go ahead and crank that spill up just a little bit just to try to keep the green out of the fingers there. And then finally, we have some color correction, and you can use this to lower the saturation if you want. So I can lower that saturation just a bit. I generally don't color correct here because I want to use the Lumetri color correction. So I'm going to go ahead and reset this. Then I'll put this back to fit. And then I can look at my key. So this looks pretty good. The last thing to do would be to go to color. And since we pulled all the green out of the image, we can go ahead and just add a little bit of green back in with the tint. And then we can change the temperature because the lights in this scene were very hot and orange. And then now we have a nice key. So hopefully this tutorial helps you use the ultra key effect in Adobe Premiere Pro. Happy green screening and happy video editing.